Good afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. This is Rich again, back for your second video blog of the day for Thursday, July 28th, 2016, around 4.58 in the afternoon in Bellica, Massachusetts. And it's a hot day out today, over 90, and it's going to be the last humid day for a while because tomorrow could be some rain showers and cooler. Weekend looks perfect and could be hot and humid at the end of next week. We'll wait and see about that. Some news to report. The Indiana Pacers will be playing the Denver Nuggets in an NBA regular season game in London, England, on July, um, January 12th. Also, reruns of Wings is going to premiere on Antenna TV September 12th at midnight to 1 in the morning. HBO has renewed Ballers starring Dwayne Do Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, for a third season. VH1 Classic is going to be rebranded as MTV Classic on August 1st and you could see, and there'll be a lot of old school MTV shows on there including Singled Out. I love Singled Out because Jenny McCarthy was so funny as a co-host. And a couple of passings to report. Um, radio talk show host Jerry Doyle passed away at the age of 60 and former Major League Baseball player Doug Griffin passed away at the age of 69. Doug was battling a long illness. He was on the 1975 um, Boston Red Sox. So prayers to their families in this time of need. And that's about it on the news. My second video blog subject of the day is to form a classic TV game show, Rhyme and Reason. Rhyme and Reason was a comedy game show which had to do with poetry. It lasted for approximately a year on ABC from July 7th, 1975 through July 9th, 1976, hosted by Bob Eubanks. And the, uh, the announcer was Johnny Jacobs. And it was produced by W.T. Need Productions. And this game show was two contestants playing along with six celebrities. And they would, it was about rhyming words, kind of like poetry. And the, the main game was two contestants pl played against the six celebrities. Bob Eubank would we a so sonnet a type poem and there was once a man who lived in the box and the second the second like part of the sen se sentence or the sonnet you, you would have to guess the last word which rhymed and uh, contestants would write down words and they would have to call on the six celebrities they would alternate it alternate it. They would write down several words that would rhyme and then the first contestant would pick the first celebrity and if the contestant got what the celebrity said they would get two points but if the celebrity got the contestant's answer they would get one point. Gameplay was to three points and whoever won three points would win one match and two hundred and fifty dollars. It would it took two matches to win the game and if the contestant got it got the word that didn't match the celebrity it would um go on to the another contestant they would continue on until somebody got three points to win the game or if all six celebrities were used in a round if all six ce celebrities were used in a round and they could not guess the word or somebody get three points, Bob would read another poem. Whoever whoever got to um, whoever won two matches would win five hundred dollars and then they would go on to the bonus round for five thousand dollars 
and the winning contestant could pick a celebrity of their choosing, and they would ha they would write down words that rhymed, and it would have 30 seconds to guess what words they wanted rhymed, and if they got each each word was like a thousand dollars a piece. If they got three words, they would win five thousand dollars. Contestants could stay on the game for five days, so it was a possibility that uh, that they could win over twenty five thousand dollars. The contestants and some of the celebrities on who were frequent guests on the show was the poet laureate Nipsey Russell, Mitzi McCall, and her wife Charlie Birch. And um, Pat Harrington Jr., Orson Bean, Lee Merriweather, even Richard Dawson was on Rhyme and Reason. Some people considered Rhyme and Reason kind of a little bit of a knockoff of the match game, which which was at was was which was very popular around this time period. Rhyme and Reason did not use um double entendres though. Oh, so some of the music that was in um Rhyme and Reason were recycled from other classic game shows like The Joker's Wild and the New League Game and WTN WTT Ned is a producer, but I looked him up. He didn't produced too many things, and it's been an urban legend that W.T. Nid is not a real person. It was just a figurehead name, and there were, there's been r rumors who it really is. There's two two of, two of possibilities. One was Dan Anwright, who was a game show producer. He was basically blackballed during the scandals of the of, 20, of 21, but he returned to work and he returned to Hollywood in 1975 to produce The Joker's Wild on CBS. And another person who W.T. Nid is Chuck Barris. In 1975, Chuck Barris Productions only was producing tre Treasure Hunt once a week. So it could be Chuck Barris or Dan Rick, but that's never been proven. And not too many episodes of Rhyme and Reason exist because ABC like erased all the tapes of daytime and late night programming during this time period. They didn't think there was a future for reruns of game shows. And there's only a certain amount of episodes of Rhyme and Reason that were that was been discovered, the pilot episode, a couple of other random episodes here and there, which I saw on YouTube, and the audio version of the last um, Rhyme and Reason um, film, which the celebrities were destroying the set by ripping down the po podiums and the rugs, and that was deemed to be un they ABC decided not to air it because that was kind of this disrespectful to end the show like they destroying a set, and I saw like Rhyme and Reason a few times on YouTube. The the game was actually p pretty funny, and actually I th thought this kind of the show kind of had legs, but it didn't last m more than a year. The show that Rhyme and Reason was replaced by was. Family Feud with Richard Dawson, which lasted close to nine years. And that's about it on Rhyme and Reason. I'll be back with the third and final video blog of the night, which will be about uh, my take on tattoos and piercings. And like I always say, keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Bunning guy, Molly Rose brother, WCCO Rocks, and that's nice legs. Elizabeth Hatt is so, so stunning. She's the best. Amy Swansea's awesome. Amy and Barbara Gibbs of ABC 11 has a sweet southern accent. And Linda Church is such a cool girl. She's got nice legs as well. Have a good day, everybody. See you later.